Grappling hooks can be one of those very unique ways that you are able to move around levels, especially ones that have a lot of trees or rocky terrains or just a lot of things overhead that you can easily grapple onto. Or even in zero G environments where there's not a lot of easy movement, it's a very interesting and unique way to be able to move around that level. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up a very simple grappling hook that you can use in any VR game. But before we go ahead and jump to that, if you enjoy this level and want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. So let's go and get started here. So this is the scene that I've set up. Uh, these are little cubes and everything that you see around, these are what we're going to end up grappling onto. These are just standard cubes. So if I, I just go and open up the world outliner, you can see these are all cubes. Uh, this grappling hook will also work with things such as the floor, basically anything you can collide with should work just fine. You should have no issues whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we will be able to collide with quite a bit here. Um, if you play around with collision settings, you can certainly disable some of these, but I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, so we're going to start by first setting up a new character for our VR player. And we're actually going to be doing some back and forth because we actually need to have our VR player set up in order to create the grappling hook. And then we need to spawn the grappling hook in the player. So we're gonna be doing some back and forth here. Um, I'll be keeping it as simple as I possibly can in order to make this as smooth as possible. But just keep that in mind, we will be going back and forth just a little bit. So uh, here in our content browser, let's go and get started by opening up a new folder. It's gonna be called Blueprints. There we go, just like that. And in here, let's start with our character. And this is going to be a character here. So just a standard character blueprint class. And I'm just gonna call this grappling VR character. And let's go and open that up. So the reason we're using this character as opposed to a VR pawn or something like that is really for one primary reason. The, the main reason that we're using this is unlike the VR pawn, we're able to apply fit, uh, physics forces to our capsule component. This also already has gravity applied to it. So as we're falling, once we finish that grappling, gravity will automatically take hold. Um, we will be enabling and disabling gravity on this player though. So, uh, and I'll talk about that once we're in the grappling hook. Um, but this just has, a, this is just a lot better set up for the whole process that we're gonna be going through here. So that's the reason we're gonna be using this character as opposed to the standard VR pawn. So that all said, let's go and get started here with the grappling VR character. I'm gonna start by um, in the capsule component, I'm gonna set the sphere radius and half height to one. And the reason for this, um, actually maybe I should talk about this real quick, is because our camera and our motion controllers are going to consider the floor level to be wherever the center of this capsule component is. But because this capsule component will collide with the environment, it will actually raise up. So that way down here at the bottom of the capsule component is where the floor of the environment will actually be, which is why we're actually scaling down this radius and half height is to make sure that it's closer to the proper height that we would expect for it to be at. So, um, and then a couple other changes we need to make here. We do need to set simulate physics to true. This is gonna be required in order to uh, apply physics forces that we'll be using in the grappling hook to our capsule component here. This is what's actually going to make our character fly around. This is what's actually gonna make the grappling hook work. And one final thing that I, that I personally like to do because it makes things a little bit better is under constraints, set lock rotation on X, Y, and Z. The reason for this is because of our capsule half height shape and because we have physics enabled on it, when we collide with the environment and sometimes even when we start applying forces to our capsule component, it'll start rolling around and then the player kind of loses all control of where they should be. So just keep that in mind. That's why I'm locking this rotation. It's the simplest possible um, fix to this that I found. So I, I just like locking the rotation because it, it's nice, quick, and simple. All right. So now we just need to add on a couple of components for VR specifically. So I'm going to start by adding in the camera and we don't need to do anything further to this. This automatically locks to HMD and in case you want to double check that, just look up lock. Um, lock to HMD should be checked um, true. 
And then we're also going to add two motion controllers, one called motion controller left. And then let me duplicate that. And that's gonna be called motion controller right. Make sure these are attached to the root component. They are not attached to the camera or each other. Otherwise that again will cause them to become higher than they actually should be or offset in weird directions. Um, and then finally, uh, to, for these motion controllers, I'm going to come down here under visualization, display device model. I'm gonna set uh, model source to custom. And I like using the Vive pre-controller mesh. You can use whatever mesh you want. This is just something so we can see where motion controllers are at. Um, and then on motion controller right only, I'm gonna set motion source to right. We don't need to do the same thing to motion control left because motion source is already set to left, so our left hand's already set up. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to compile and save that. And uh, that's all that we're going to do on the grappling uh, VR character for now. We'll be coming back here in one second to handle the event graph, but we'll we'll take care of that uh, after we set up our grappling hook. So, uh, again, opening up our content browser in the scene. I'm going to, again, under blueprints, create another blueprint class. This is going to be an actor. And I'm just going to call this grappling hook. Go and open that up. And here's where we're going to create our grappling hook for our grappling VR character. So here we're going to be doing a couple things. I'm going to start by adding in a component. I'm going to use a sphere. This can be whatever stack mesh you would like. I just personally like using the sphere. It is pretty good. We'll end up scaling this down the grappling VR character as well, um, just a little bit. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, and do I do also highly suggest making sure that whatever stack mesh you do use is set to as the root component for the grappling hook. Then over here, uh, just make sure simu simulation generates hit events is true. Um, that does sometimes seem to cause some issues, so make sure that that's set to true. We will be using on component hit down here, so we do need to make sure that hit does work correctly. Um, and finally, uh, over here in components, I'm going to add in a projectile movement component. And what this does is this just allows for our grappling hook to automatically move without us having to do anything additional in the event graph. So this is just a nice, simple, easy way to apply some projectile movement to our grappling hook. So um, I'm going to, here in our projectile movement component, I'm gonna set the initial speed to say 700. I, I think that should be more than good enough. And I also want to set our projectile gravity scale to zero. What this will do is this will make sure that gravity has no effect on how this projectile moves. It'll move in a straight line, it won't stop. If you want for gravity to act on this actor and have it uh, fall over a period of time and eventually hit the ground or have some kind of limit on how far you can shoot, then you may want to come back in here and increase this projectile gravity, the projectile gravity scale to one or greater. Um, but I'm setting it to zero so that way we can just shoot straight and we don't have to worry about gravity or anything like that for now. All right, so that all said, now we can jump into our event graph. So here in our event graph, we won't be using begin play and we won't be using actor begin overlap. We will be using event tick, but let's go and grab the other events that we're gonna be using as well. So uh, in sphere, I, as I've already said, uh, we're gonna be using the on component hit. So just go and hit that plus and it'll drop in our on component hit event. And this is going to determine when we finally, when our grappling hook finally hits something. So it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, then we also have event tick. The last event that we're gonna be using is going to be called event destroyed. And this runs when the grappling hook gets destroyed, which is gonna be called in our player. This is just going to revert any settings that we apply up here on component hit. And I'll show that here in one second, um, but that'll just kind of help revert anything that we do to the grappling VR character. All right, so here in our on component hit, we're gonna start here. Once we hit a component, we're going to be doing a couple things. First, I'm gonna take our projectile movement and we're going to stop movement immediately. And that does exactly what it implies it does. It just stops all movement, so we just stop there. 
<clears throat> this gives us a nice stationary anchor so that way we can move in a direction without worrying about our grappling hook continuing on or bouncing off the um, bouncing off whatever collides or anything like that it will just stop all movement then after we stop all movement we need a reference here and I'm going to be grabbing a reference to our VR character is what I'm going to call this um, and I'm just going to set this as a grappling ooh, VR character object reference um, so that's going to be our variable type. Th this is something we're going to set in our grappling VR character once we spawn this grappling hook. Um, again, that's going to be something we're going to deal with in the event graph. But this will just allow for us to get a, a quick and easy reference to our VR character here. So grabbing this, I'm going to get our capsule component. Let me go and get that. In case you don't remember, this capsule component is jumping into our grappling VR character. This capsule component is our root component. So this is what we're actually going to be applying physics to. And this is what's also going to be um, handling gravity for us. So here in the grappling hook uh, on capsule component, we're going to set gravity. It's going to be called set enable gravity, just like that. And we want to make sure that gravity enabled is set to false. You don't have to do this. However, I find this to be much better if we disable gravity before doing anything to our grappling VR character. Um, gravity does tend to add quite a bit of weight, so you do have to increase the force that we're gonna be applying. So that's why I personally choose to set enable gravity to false. Um, so that is our on component hit. That's everything we needed to do. So down here in our event tick, we're going to start by first grabbing a gate. This gate is pretty simple. All this does is this allows for us to determine when we can pass through. So as you can see, it starts off closed. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is once we hit, we're going to open this gate. This will allow for us to start applying physics to our, um, or start applying force to our VR character pretty simply. So this is just a very nice and easy way without having to create a Boolean and a branch and having to do it that way. This is a great alternative to being able to determine when you can continue on event tick. So, <laughs> so that should ho hopefully sum that up a little bit. So uh, here are on gate, once we have this gate open, we're going to want to take our VR character and we're going to get the capsule component and we're going to add force to this capsule component. So let me go and drag that forward just like that. And as you can see, all we need is some kind of vector force that determines the direction and the magnitude of the force that we're going to be applying to this capsule component. Um, optionally, we can set a bone name if we want to apply this force to a specific bone or acceleration change. I'm not gonna be worrying about either of these. I'm only gonna be worrying about force. So, in order to determine our force, we're going to need another reference over here. And I'm just going to call this motion controller. And as you may have guessed, the variable type is going to be a, oh, I mistyped that, a motion controller component object reference. Uh, again, this is gonna be something that we're going to set up in the grappling VR character. Um, we're, we're, is where we're going to actually set this motion controller. So getting our motion controller, we're going to first get the world location. And then we're going to find, look at rotation. And we want our world location from our motion controller to go into start. Our target value is going to be the get actor location. And that's going to go into our target for a fine look at rotation. What this will do is this will determine what direction our force should be applied in. So um, as you may be able to see already, we have a rotator here, but we need a vector. So a very simple way to get to convert this rotator to vector is we're going to drag out and we're going to get forward vector. That will take this rotator and it will convert to a vector that we can actually use. And before we feed this into the force, I'm gonna make one final change. I'm gonna take this forward vector and I'm going to multiply this 
I'm going to create one more variable here and I'm going to call this force. Change that to a float there. And taking this force, oh, I don't mean to set that. We need to get this force, pass that into the multiply. And that will go into our add force just like that. So what this will do is this will modify our forward vector in order to determine the magnitude of the force that we're applying to our VR character. So I personally prefer to have this at a fairly high value. I'll set this to maybe 300. Um, you can of course increase or decrease this later on if you want this force to be greater or less than. Um, that is entirely up to you. Um, but that finishes off our event tick. This will allow for us to, to apply a force that way we can grapple in a specific direction. Final thing we're gonna do is I'm going to come back up here on component hit. I'm going to copy this set enable gravity. And then down here on event destroyed, I'm just going to set our gravity back to enabled. And that is all that we need to do for our event destroyed. Uh, like I said, this is the event destroyed is just meant as a way so we can revert anything that we do to our VR character here. So in this case, the only thing that we did to our VR character is disabled gravity. So this allows for us to re-enable gravity very simply. It's, it, it's not super complicated or anything like that. So we're just re-enabling our gravity there. And that is all that we need to do for our grappling hook. So now we can close out of this and jump back into our grappling VR character. And now we can finally move on to the event graph and finish off our grappling character here. So here in our event graph, I'm going to first destroy our begin play, begin overlap, and tick. We won't be using any of those three. What we will be using is our trigger left and our trigger right. I'm gonna move that down a little bit. And what this is going to be for is this is what I've chosen to use in order to actually spawn and use our grappling hook. You can use whatever button you want, or if you don't find trigger left or trigger right for whatever reason, jump into project settings. And then under engine input, this is where I'm grabbing trigger left and trigger right. You can see that these are already set up by default in the project settings. And they're quite simply set as triggers for multiple uh, motion controllers. In this case, we have touch, index, mixed reality, and vibe. I'm using the index, but this will, as you can tell, work for any other controller that you may have as well. So that should kind of help simplify in case you don't find trigger left or trigger right. Now, moving on to, moving back into our grappling character. Once we have our trigger left and trigger right input action, this is going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do is I'm going to spawn an actor from class, and this is gonna be unpressed. Then the class we're gonna use is going to be called grappling hook, since that's the grappling hook we just created. Spawn transform, I'm going to split this struct pin, and I'm going to grab our motion controller left, because that's what we're using here, we're using trigger left. I'm going to get the world transform, and I'm going to split this transform as well. And I'm gonna set this location and rotation both for our grappling hook. Now, as for scale, we're depending on your mesh, you may not want it at a one by one by one scale. So this is the opportunity for you to modify that scale. I'm going to set this to 0.1 on all X, Y, and Z uh, here because this kind of simplifies our spawning scale. And this, will, this is a little bit more of an appropriate scale in my opinion. You may choose, like I said, to use a different mesh that's already scaled at what you want. Um, so that's entirely up to you if you want to use a different scale. And then last setting that I personally like to change, again, uh, collision handling override, always spawn, ignore collisions. Again, we should never have any issues with this, but this just kind of acts as a precaution in case for whatever reason our grappling hook chooses not to spawn. This will just kind of help make sure that it does. So that all out of the way. Uh, now we can move on to our to what we need to do to our grappling hook. So first we need a reference. So I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call this grappling hook left. And the reason I'm, I'm saying this as grappling hook left is because this will allow for us to have two grappling hooks at once if we would like. Um, 
there, I, I can certainly see certain use cases where you may want to use this. This can kind of make us more float in air if we use two on opposing sides. So this is just a, this, this is just in case you ever want to use two grappling hooks. So uh, once we have that reference to our grappling hook, we're going to first set VR character. Because if you may recall, uh, I did say we were going to set a couple of those references in our once we spawn our grappling hook. So our VR character, we're going to just get a reference to self, and that's going to go into our VR character. And then the second thing we need to set here is we need to set motion controller, just like that. Um, and rather than dragging motion controller left as a reroute node all the way over here, I'm just going to grab another reference here and just use that. And final thing we need to do is on released, we're going to take our grappling hook left and we're just going to destroy that actor. That is all that we're going to do. Uh, this will allow for us to clean up that grappling hook when, when we no longer want it. So it'll just despawn and we don't need to worry about it anymore. And that is all that we need to do in order to spawn this grappling hook. So I'm going to copy all this. I think I need to do a couple of drags there. There we go. Copy all this. And we're just going to make a couple of changes to our references here because this is all set up for our left hand. So I'm going to change this over here to motion controller right. Okay, I guess that didn't want to let me. There we go, just like that. And then right over here, again, I'm going to grab our motion controller right. That's going to go into our motion controller just like that. Um, we do also need to set a new grappling hook uh, re uh, reference over here. So I'm going to, again, promote this to a new variable. And I'm just going to call this grappling hook right. And go and drag that out for our VR character and our motion controller. Finally, down here in our destroy actor, we're just gonna get rid of that grappling hook left and grab our grappling hook right, just like that. And that sets up the spawning for both of our grappling hooks. So now they're both usable. We are all set to go. So I'm going to compile and save this, close that out. Finally, in our scene, I'm just going to down here, roughly at the center, grab our grappling VR character, move that to the center. And then under details, uh, just look up auto if you don't have it. I'm gonna set up auto possess player to player zero and auto receive input to player zero as well. And that's all that we need to do. So I'm gonna go and jump into my VR headset and we can go and give this a test run. All right, so before I say anything, I wanna say the force I set was way too high. Um, I did decrease this force value. I set it to 80 if I recall. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I did set the force value way too high. It was not very manageable, at least for me, it, it went way, way too fast. Um, so I have now set the force value from the grappling hook to 80. Um, so just keep that in mind when you guys are watching this part, if you guys are trying to figure out a good speed for you guys. Anyways, so, you can see here we are in the level. So I can go and shoot out a grappling hook and that is with either hand there. So you can see they, I mean, they don't move at a, at a really fast speed. They're not incredibly slow either. They go straight out. And as I said, you if you want to apply some gravity or something, you can jump into the projectile movement for that grappling hook and modify that projectile gravity scale in order to allow for gravity to do its thing. Um, Obviously that's not what I did here. Anyways, so I can go ahead and point out and hit that cube, for example, and you can see I just go out and I can quite simply just shoot myself um, into a, a sphere. And you can also see too, I can shoot two as well to kind of more or less center myself. And again, if I shoot myself straight up then uh, gravity does its thing. I was trying to go straight up. There we go, like that. <laughs> then you can see gravity does do its thing and we just uh, fly around. You can also see too, if I go ahead and like shoot the ground, then I'm able to somewhat move myself because it's going between the motion controller and where the point of the um, 
of the sphere is. So I don't know how clearly it's showing up, but I am able to move myself just somewhat if I'm just standing over a grappling point. Um, but this is this is also a just a somewhat easy way to be able to to just kind of slide around as well if you wanted to not use it necessarily for flying around. But you could see that I, I can just quite simply shoot myself around. So it works pretty well as, as just a simple grappling hook setup. So yeah, I'm, that is the grappling hook. Ta-da! And with that, that's how we set up a very simple grappling hook that we can use in any VR level. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And also I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.